you want to sit down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Good. Thanks. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, we were told that we actually have about 45 minutes, and so we'll wa I want to leave time uh, room for question. So I'll probably just make some comments right now and then have uh, Arrow uh, follow up with her comments. Uh, actually, what was just said is that I'm not really the senior trade official. I'm just a senior official, period. So I, I don't really know anything. It's just, uh, but she, he, she does a trade. She's from USTR, and I'm from the State Department. Uh, so I know that you're, um, I'm not sure if you're all very familiar with APEC, but I'm sure uh, quite. But let me just say uh, that, uh, uh, just describe what's going to happen in the next, uh, well, from October 1st to October 8th. That's the, essentially the APEC week, Leaders Week. So let me explain a little bit what's going to happen there. Uh, let me then talk about why it's important, and then let me talk about a little bit about at least U.S. priorities, and then I'll leave uh, Arrow to talk about some of the trade, more specific trade priorities that we have. Okay. Now, in terms of the Leaders Week, as I said earlier, uh, we will uh, have essentially start off with what we call the CSOM, which is the concluding SOM. Uh, senior officials like myself and counterparts from the uh, 21 other, 20, 20 other economies. Uh, that will be from October 1st until October 2nd. Uh, there will be a little bit of a break. So we can all go to the beach. And then uh, from the October 3rd to the 4th, uh, we will have the, what we call the um, minister, uh, APEC ministers meeting. So that's from the 4th to the 5th. And uh, so we will have, uh, of course, uh, in our side, basically foreign, the foreign side, meaning the State Department and, of course, USTR, and as well as, uh, in our case, Secretary of Commerce uh, will be there. Uh, but generally, it's just the, the foreign and the trade side. And then on the 7th and the 8th, uh, we will have the, uh, the leaders uh, of the, uh, the economic leaders of the uh, different economies come. So, of course, President Obama and others will be, uh, uh, will be joining us. And I understand that also President, uh, President Putin, uh, President Xi Jinping, and others will be coming as well. So that's essentially the outline of the week from October 1st to the 8th. Uh, and uh, in terms of why it's important, just very, just very briefly, I know you all have the background already, uh, but obviously if you look at APEC itself, uh, we have uh, some 21 economies that uh, essentially uh, have a population of about 2.7 billion people. And, you know, the three top economies in the world, uh, U.S., of course, China, and Japan uh, will be there. Uh, and you have about 50 percent of the world's GDP represented among the 21 economies, including, of course, Mexico, Chile, and Peru on the uh, Western Hemispheric side. Uh, and uh, we have about 44 percent of global trade uh, within or among these 21 economies. So it's a very significant group of people gathering together. Now, in terms of um, uh, the, this year's particular APEC themes, uh, you know, each year, as you know, a different economy hosts. Uh, this year's theme, uh, of course, by host uh, economy uh, Indonesia, uh, will be, uh, first of all, there are three. Uh, first of all, it is uh, that of trying to attain the Boger goals, and these essentially are goals uh, of moving us towards trade, uh, free trade, essentially. Uh, uh, 2010 for developed economies and 2020 for developing economies. So essentially, uh, trade and investment liberalization. Uh, the second uh, theme that they have or a goal is what they call uh, promoting connectivity, which is essentially promoting more and more connections between different economies. Uh, and that could mean physically in terms of infrastructure, uh, flights, ports, uh, and so on, customs, of course. Uh, uh, could mean institutional ones in terms of, uh, again, customs or uh, government policies, um, regulatory policies, structural reform, things of that nature. Um, uh, and finally, they have the what they call sustainable growth with equity. And uh, I guess th this theme, uh, essentially, from, from all of our points of view, 
uh, is intended to try to promote sustainable growth. In other words, not just focus on GDP. A lot of countries uh, focus simply on the GDP growth, how fast you grow, but of course you have to, when you grow, clearly there's an impact on the environment, there's an impact on social fabric and so on. So uh, sustainable growth with equity means that you have to take into consideration all of the different factors that really go into sustaining growth for the long term and not just a very fast growth uh, in the short term. So those are the three basic themes uh, that the Indonesian host economy uh, has proposed for this, this particular year. And we've been working on this since uh, this whole past year, although I'm, I'm new to this game, but uh, they've been proposing, uh, they've been proposed this early in the year and we've been going through here for the past year and we're ending up now in the final uh, sum. And I've only been on the job for one month, so. Now in terms of U.S. priorities, uh, let me very quickly go into that and try to characterize that essentially along these different categories, I think, in terms of, um, and I'll let Arrow talk a little bit more about that, but in terms of uh, the Boger goals or moving towards uh, uh, greater trade and investment liberalization, uh, you know, obviously this year we will be trying very hard to continue to try to move this uh, process forward uh, and trying to make sure that we uh, uh, are careful uh, about sort of protectionist tendencies, especially when the world economy, the global economy, uh, tends to be a little bit fragile sometimes, a little volatile. Uh, so we have uh, here, I'll again let Arrow talk more about it, but uh, things about maybe offering proposals or policies that will be to, to promote jobs and competitiveness that would be alternatives to sort of more protectionist policies like local uh, content requirements or um, discriminatory innova uh, innovation policies, et cetera. So we're trying to make sure that we keep the momentum going forward in terms of liberalization rather than uh, protectionism. Uh, so that's, that's one thing we're doing. And again, specifically, we'll have uh, Arrow talk more about that. In terms of promoting uh, connectivity, um, you know, we, we um, sort of in line with trade and investment liberalization, what we're trying to do is, of course, uh, try to facilitate trade in terms of the supply chain. As you know, uh, among the 21 economies, uh, one of the reasons you have such a vibrant economy is because there's so much supply chain crossing between one economy and another economy. Sometimes you know, a product that's sent to eventually to Japan or the United States has gone through many stages in different economies. And so, you know, so assembly uh, uh, and so on. So obviously one of the key factors in trying to make sure that we are able to uh, have vibrant trade and make, take advantage of the connections that we do have is to make sure that uh, we uh, have fairly, f fairly smooth uh, customs facilitation when it gets from port to port, from airport to airport. Uh, and make sure that we have uh, people who can do that at each economy. So uh, what we're trying to do here is, is, in fact, we're trying to see if we can propose a fund uh, that will actually be used to, and we already have studied some of the issues in the supply chain to see where it's being held up, where certain things are being held up. And so we're trying to propose a fund that we will gather, uh, hopefully, a lot of the economies to support to try to not only study it, but also to recommend policies to try to, uh, to try to address what we would call some of these choke points. And uh, if we're able to succeed in doing this, bu also building skills among the 21 economies, then the, the, the goods that are being uh, sent through the supply chain will be traveling faster, easier, and with greater uh, certainty. And APEC has set a goal already of trying to increase it by about 10 percent uh, by 2015. Uh, so, so we're working on that as well. Um, uh, and beyond that, I think we're also uh, uh, going beyond sort of just moving goods and uh, you know, services. Uh, a lot of the things that APEC has been working on this year has been, uh, for example, in terms of trying to prom promote people-to-people -people connectivity, meaning essentially, for, for example, uh, improving travel so that tourists and business travelers can go faster from uh, economy to economy. Uh, that facilitates travel of people. Uh, one other thing we've done is in terms of the economic front, we, uh, are, we have sort of proposed a visionary goal of about one million 
uh, students uh, going cross-border for education uh, among the uh, APEC economies so that we can have people studying, students studying in different, co different uh, countries. Uh, and that would, of course, facilitate, first of all, knowledge building uh, for these students, but at the same time, it would facilitate uh, uh, understanding of each other's system, uh, not just economic systems, but also cultural systems and so on. So we think this people-to-people -people connectivity is very important, and we're uh, trying to push it this year, and hopefully we have a work plan for bringing it to next year. Uh, and finally, I think on the sustainable growth with equity side, uh, I attended, for example, a, um, a conference uh, on the women in economy in Bali a couple of weeks ago, and that was also joined by a, a conference on uh, SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises. And uh, so what we're trying to do here is uh, to sustain this growth, we know that we have to tap the potential of, for example, women uh, in uh, the various economies because there's a great source. And we, uh, had a McKinsey report study tell us that, in fact, if you look at a lot of companies that were comparing uh, companies at high levels with, with women on the board, that they actually perform, on average, much better uh, because they bring something to the, to, to the, um, to the management side. And uh, so there's a vast potential there, and we're trying to tap that and find ways to, to tap that potential. Same thing with SMEs that normally are the ones who employ people. And there's sometimes up to 90, 95 percent of an economy in terms of numbers of comp companies in that economy. So very important. Uh, and so we're trying to find different ways to increase their access to financing. Uh, and so from our side, from our point of view in the U.S., this is a very uh, important priority to try to, again, uh, um, sort of galvanize uh, these different uh, groups within society. Um, and I think a part that from that we um, – are also trying to, on the sustainable side, of course, worry about the environment. So we have workshops and so on on food security, health security, uh, and we're trying to uh, move forward on these in these different areas. For example, I think in the food security area, we have uh, now developed our the working groups have developed a uh, sort of a roadmap, a 20, 2020 roadmap uh, in terms of food security, where we're trying to reach by 2020. Uh, by doing different, using different policy means in terms, for example, of freer trade, uh, not having export uh, restrictions on your food products, uh, and uh, biotechnology, uh, the, the use of biotechnology for certain kinds of food, and so on. All of these things to try to make sure that we are able to increase the food security uh, for, the, for the region as a whole. Uh, going into 2020, um, Dan. So those are the, the general uh, our agenda. It's a very full agenda. And uh, I know that um, our leaders will be discussing a lot of these issues for, for again, the ministers and the leaders for uh, several days. Hopefully we'll be able to take some actions uh, that will actually lead to policy changes, maybe agreements among the 21 economies, or maybe uh, in, in some cases it will be simply individual action plans. So each country that, or economy that learns from this process will decide to go back and implement certain policy changes or reforms that will allow the, the again, uh, this region to not only prosper, but also increase uh, integration uh, among the 21 economies. So that, those are our priorities uh, for the moment. And um, now, if you, if, you, if you don't mind, let me turn it over to Arrow. Thanks. Well, thanks, everyone. I will uh, focus my remarks today on what are the trade and investment priorities for our um, for the meetings in Bali, the APEC meetings in Bali. Uh, the U.S. vision for APEC in 2013 on trade investment really is to focus on ensuring that APEC remains a dynamic place to do business and achieve results. When we hosted APEC in 2011, we tried to foster a more results-oriented environment and ensure that all of our officials were working towards delivering concrete outcomes. And so in 2012, when Russia hosted APEC, we took forward this, they carried on that momentum, and we had a very significant outcome in the Russia year, which was reaching agreement on a commercially and environmentally credible APEC list of environmental goods on which APEC economies will cut tariffs to 5% or less. Um, this was an historic achievement. Until 2012, nobody, not even the WTO, had be, been able to come up with this kind of list of environmental goods, and this was the, you know, the the first tariff-cutting deal um, in over 15 years. 
So the fact that the APEC was able to do that speaks volumes about the dynamic environment there. And so, of course, we're trying to work with our Indonesian hosts this year to deliver additional meaningful and concrete results and make sure that our leaders and ministers carry forward on past year's commitments. To that end, the United States is seeking four main trade and investment related outcomes in Bali. First, as Bob discussed, um, Indonesia's focus this year on connectivity has provided momentum to our work on supply chain performance in the region. We did set a goal of um, improving supply chain performance by 10% by 2015. In order to meet that goal, we in the United States believe very strongly that we're going to need an accelerated pace to get there, and we're not going to be able to achieve that without additional resources. That's why that we're, we're working very hard with our APEC colleagues to establish a dedicated supply chain fund that would help APEC economies implement their supply chain and trade facilitation commitments around the region. Secondly, we at USTR um, have increasingly hear from stakeholders, private sector representatives, about their concerns with respect to trade distorting local content requirements around the world. This year in APEC, we've been working on a, um, discussing the long-term economic growth impact of local content requirements and identifying ways that economies can promote job creation and competitiveness without resorting to these measures. And we hope to see leaders endorse the APEC best practices on job creation and competitiveness, which will be a model for how to promote domestic economic growth goals without resorting to localization barriers. Third. We are looking forward to carrying on APEC's successful agenda to improve the regulatory environment in the region. Again, we hear from stakeholders consistently that regulatory issues are th among the biggest barriers that they face in trading and investment, investing around the world and in the Asia Pacific. Uh, APEC has a long-term um, agenda on this. In 2011, we took um, some significant steps forward towards strengthening implementation of what we call good regulatory practices um, by, uh, by having APEC economies commit to ensure internal coordination of regulatory work, assess the impact of regulations, and conduct public consultations. We're, we're advancing that agenda, and specifically this year, we're asking APEC economies to do that by taking on some additional tools um, related to, um, to single online locations for regulatory information, regulatory planning, and periodic regulatory reviews. This is all very, um, very detailed technical work, but it has a huge impact on the overall goal to promote uh, trade and investment in the region. Fourth and finally, we are on environmental goods and services. APEC this year has been planning for implementing our tariff reduction commitments, and we're asking leaders and ministers to endorse a plan for assisting economies in that, who need individual help in that regard. We're also shifting our focus on environmental goods and services to addressing non-tariff measures, and we're asking leaders and ministers to endorse in Bali the establishment of the APEC Public-Private Partnership on Environmental Goods. This is a group of business and government representatives that will serve as a mechanism on addressing issues like local content requirements, regulatory coherence, government support programs, and procurement in the environment related to environmental goods and services. The body will meet for the first time next year in China and will focus its, issue, its discussion initially on renewable and clean energy issues. Um, as you know, Indonesia is also hosting the 9th WTO ministerial meeting this year in um, early December, just two months after the APEC leaders meeting. So MC9 will clearly be a big topic of discussion in Bali as, and uh, certainly for APEC trade ministers. We would like to see um, the APEC meetings in Bali provide a real a strong political impetus to achieving a meaningful outcome at the MC9. Um, that would include a binding trade facilitation agreement at its core, as well as successful um, conclusion of negotiations for an expanded information technology agreement. APEC has a long history of spurring progress in the WTO, WTO, sorry, WTO negotiations. This is the perfect year for them to again step up and give, um, give contribute some collective leadership to um, positive momentum at the WTO. 
In conclusion, um, what I, I want to tell you that the last time that Indonesia hosted APEC was in 1994. And 1994 was a memorable and successful APEC year because that was the year that APEC came together to develop the BOGOR goals, um, free and open trade and investment. Um, I think we have a real opportunity again this year to take forward work towards achieving those BOGOR goals and to demonstrate APEC's collective commitment to free and open trade and investment and to this advancing this organization that has um, proven it can produce meaningful and practical results. Thanks. All right, with that, we're going to open the floor to questions. If, as usual, you wouldn't mind in introducing yourself, saying who you are and with which uh, outlet you're with. And please also indicate which of our briefers you would like to direct the question. And let's also try to keep the questions on the topic. Thank you very much. <laughs> so up here in front. John Zan with CTI TV of Taiwan. I have a question for Mr. Wang. Um, Many of the uh, 21 economies have been hosts to um, um, these annual meetings. Um, some of them have been uh, more than once. Uh, but Taiwan has never been a host. Um, would would uh, arrangement be uh, made? Would the United States support arrangement for Taiwan to actually uh, play host? Mm -hmm. um, that's question number one. Number two, President Ma Ying-jeou has, you know, has wanted to um, um, attend the leaders meeting um, um, can would the United States um, support arrangement uh, for President Ma to actually uh, be part of the uh, leaders meeting thank you very much sure yeah I think as you all of you know uh, APEC is an organization that uh, essentially makes decisions through consensus so whether one uh, economy or another economy supports it or so on is not sufficient. So obviously I think if we were able to get uh, a consensus on Taiwan's participation, then I think uh, that would be something that's possible. So the question is whether we can get consensus on Taiwan's participation or not. Uh, yeah. participation, uh, I'm sorry, not participation, excuse me, uh, hosting, excuse me, hosting. So the question is whether what we can actually get a consensus among uh, all of our economies uh, for Taiwan hosting uh, the, an APEC year. Would the U.S. support that? Would the United States support Well, that? I would say, I, I don't know now that I can actually say that, but I would say at this point I don't see why we have any problems with it. But we'll have to work consensus on that. Given the uh, relationship, well, the improved relations between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait, right. between China and right. the United States, and uh, the United States and Taiwan. Right. What would arrangement uh, be made? Is it possible to make arrangement well, to, for President Ma to attend? Right. Well, to to be on on, Ma, on President Ma himself, and also on the question of Taiwan, I think we. I just want to be very direct. Obviously, uh, the key player here will be China. Uh, Chen Weihua, China Daily. Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to see, you know, uh, I mean, multiple question about China. I mean, going to be the next year's host. Uh, right. You have uh, yeah. any expectation? I mean, what you think would be the major thing? I mean, this year, I don't know, is there going to be bilateral? I mean, at the, the APEC uh, between China and U.S. leaders? And uh, what you think would be the major issue? Are they going to talk about, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, China showed interest in TPP? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're promoting the RCEP, obviously, but, you know, do you think this is going to be the topic and, uh, and uh, also maybe even the, bio, the bit sure. uh, BIT? So, right. thank you. Yeah. No, uh, as you, some of you may know, I had served in Beijing before as a deputy there uh, for two and a half years, and I'd also served in Taiwan for three years uh, prior to that. Uh, and uh, uh, even when I was there before I left, the Chinese, uh, my Chinese counterpart had actually come to me, Tan Jian, and actually wanted to start discussing 2014 because we all expect that 2014 will also be a very good year uh, for us to be able to get trade liberalization, among other things. So uh, I think we will, we had been discussing it already, and I think in Bali this will be a great opportunity because we do have a number of ministers there as well as different level of people. And uh, so I'm sure we'll meet in some form in Bali. And uh, clearly, because the torch is being handed over to China for 2014, 
the question of what their priorities might be uh, will certainly be, I think, discussed. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, TPP RCEP, I think, uh, as you all know, the initial reaction of China to TPP was not very, very positive. Uh, that's some time back. Uh, but I think over the last, uh, I'd say the last several months, last half a year, we've seen really uh, a, a more sort of positive attitude in terms of China being willing to consider and discuss uh, TPP and, and how it some, some, somehow compares to RCEP. And our point of view, of course, has always been that at some point, you know, these, all these processes have to be transparent. And so I think we would be very glad uh, in, the, in the coming you know, year to certainly discuss how you know, TPP and so on uh, is being negotiated and how and what sort of standards we have, and as, as with RCEP, as with other sort of uh, RTAs, FTAs. So discussion of, of these, these types of agreements is certainly something I think uh, that it would be useful to everyone to, to understand. I will leave it with Russian news agency TASS. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the fin uh, it was mentioned in uh, the final declaration of uh, the previous summit that took place in the Russian city of Vladivostok last year uh, that the world economy uh, uh, is, uh, was in the rather uh, dire straits. Uh, the markets were vo volatile. Uh, the situation in Europe uh, caused a lot of concerns. Uh, so the question is uh, how the global uh, economic environment uh, has changed during the last 12 months and how it would affect uh, the upcoming uh, Bali summit. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the second question is uh, some American experts or scholars uh, consider APEC uh, summits to be framers for taking uh, rather good decisions that uh, uh, are never implemented. Uh, so uh, no, how do you think uh, the decisions that were taken uh, during the last summit uh, in Russia, APEC summit uh, in Russian city of Vladivostok, are implemented? Can you report any um, progress uh, in this process? Thank you. First one uh, on the world economy. Well, I, I think I understand that Bernanke is coming up here to give a talk soon, right? <laughs> well, why don't you <laughs> save the question for him? <laughs> no, no, you're right. I mean, last year I, I read the the leaders' uh, declaration and statement, and there was in the, in the in this first part clearly discussion of the rather precarious situation that the world global economy is in. Uh, but since then, uh, you know, I, again, I'm not. Uh, I studied kind of economics, but I'm not an expert on this. But clearly, people have taken steps. Economies have taken steps. We took a lot of steps in terms of sequestration, and sometimes some even say too drastic. But I think all of the economies, maybe including in Europe, uh, because of the problems, have begin to have begun to take certain steps to correct it. And this year, it looks like look at Japan. Uh, that'd be one thing. Look at the United States. It'd be another thing. Europe, I'm not as familiar with. But I think um, in some ways, I, I don't know whether, whether we're out of the well or not yet, but I think uh, it's somewhat better than, than last year. Um, and so you know, I guess uh, how would that affect the Bali? Uh, I guess I know, I'm not sure if it really affects it, except that uh, perhaps in one way, when you have a poor economy, certainly a lot of countries tend to lean towards more protectionist measures, keeping jobs in their place and not really trading. And we think that's exactly the wrong approach. So we're gonna, that's why we're, this year we're, we're trying harder to make sure that we can underscore the importance of an open economy uh, to growth. Uh, so that's exactly why, what APEC is about. So I think it doesn't affect it in the sense of discouraging us, but it rather poses challenges for us to try to uh, move forward even faster. On your second question about implementing APEC agreements, I think when, you know, as I said in my opening remarks, when we hosted APEC in 2011, we were well aware of some of the, um, 
you know, things that people said about it, including that, you know, we don't implement or that it's sort of a talk shop. And that's why we tried to shift the focus away from sort of vision statements and closer to practical and meaningful outcomes, which you can actually measure implementation. A lot of what APEC does in terms of its commitments are broad statements of policy, and it's hard then to figure out or to measure how much that changes specific economy um, regulations or laws. But in terms of Russia's year, um, Russia did a very good job of advancing practical and meaningful outcomes. The environmental goods um, list that, inf you know, that was the basis for our commitment to reduce tariffs on environmental goods you know, is a very important and, as I said before, historic outcome. And we're taking steps this year to make sure that all of the APEC economies have the technical assistance they need to implement that on time by 2015, as was committed. Um, we also had uh, took a lot of steps on innovation policy during the Russia year, and I, as far as I know, all of those have come into play. A public-private group on science and technology and innovation was established, and they've had their meetings this year. I was just reviewing a, a set of um, project proposals they've put forward on a range of R&D and S&T um, issues, and it looks very good. So I think we can say that APEC has made a significant amount of progress in the past few years on implementing the commitment we've made, and that is because of our shift to a more practical and meaningful focus for the work that ministers and leaders do. If I could add, add something to that, just a point. You know, sometimes APEC works in a way that is not as clear sometimes, because as you know, we have individual action plans. So governments and officials who come into the, in APEC and participate in our working groups, uh, will go back learning more new things, and they actually will apply certain things in their government policies that actually um, are effective uh, and actually can change things. So it's not exactly so clearly, so implementation is not like you can see it so clearly. It's just people learning more, officials learning more, going back, practicing, recommending different policies that event that eventually uh, do make a difference. And so if you go, if you take a long-term view, just look at the Asia Pacific economy, uh, global regional economy. It's doing quite well. Indonesia, Philippines have been growing at six percent. Uh, and if you compare it to the rest of the world, Middle East, Africa, Europe, this region over the last 20 years has done very well. Now, whether it's specifically because of some implementation of some program of APEC, I don't know. But I think as a whole, this region is some is a region that is a model, I think, in many ways for the rest of the world in, in the way that's able to keep on growing in the last 20 years at a pace that is really quite uh, remarkable, historically speaking. So I think in some form it's indirectly related, not just to APEC, but to the things that all these economies are doing and to the officials who are, who are involved in, in, these, uh, in these talks. Hi, I'm Ching Yi Chen with Phoenix TV, Hong Kong. Uh, Question on TPP: We know President Obama is going to meet some uh, members of uh, TPP uh, in, during the APEC. How promising it, it is to uh, conclude TPP this year, and also on the prospect: How does the U.S. see the prospect of uh, RCEP? And some say it could be a counterbalance to TPP. How does the U.S. view that? Thank you. Thank you for your question. As you know, my area of responsibility is APEC, but so for additional questions on TPP, I refer you to our press office. But with regard to whether or not, you know, what the progress will be, um, uh, President Obama and other TPP leaders have instructed negotiators to work to try to complete the negotiations this year, and I can um, testify from the flurry of activity around my building on a daily basis that that is certainly true. We're working very hard to accomplish this. Um, the TPP leaders will be meeting at the October APEC meeting, and we think that will be a critical milestone, and our goal is to complete as much work as possible by that time. Uh, on your second question related to RCEP, we, don't, we think that um, given the dynamic um, trade and investment environment in the Asia-Pacific region, it's not surprising to us that there's more than one 
um, large scale um, free trade agreement, regional trade agreement being negotiated. We don't see those. We don't see them as mutually exclusive. We think that they, um, you know, certainly um, can, you know, certainly benefit their economies by being negotiated at the same time. We don't see this as a. We don't see RCEP as a counterbalance to TPP. We understand that there's different motivations for different negotiations, and you know, we look forward to what we're focused on in the U.S. is to getting a high quality deal done in TPP, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, I have a question for Arrow to follow up with TPP. Uh, I'm Brian Panga from Xinhua News Agency. Uh, I noticed media reported that uh, chief negotiators of TPP will hold meetings this week in Washington. Can you confirm this information? And uh, uh, what are the, are the issues on the table? Well, the chief negotiators are meeting this week in Washington. That's part of the flurry of activity I see at my elevator every day near my office. Um, I, in terms of the issues, they're they're working to n narrow down to the final stages of the negotiation. And for additional questions about that, I refer you to my press office. Thank you, everyone.